Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to talk about that how you can bind optional or nullable properties to the text field. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, if you take a look at our property over here on line number 13, this is a name property of type string and we have initialized it to empty string. And on line number 17, we are actually binding it to the text field. So this means that every time we type something in the text field that goes into the name property or updates the name property. This is all fine, but what happens if your property, the name property is not string, but optional of string or nullable of string? In that case, if you try to bind a text property of the text field, if you even want to uh, look at the signature, you can see if I write text field over here, you can take a look at the signature and you will realize that the signature actually says that it is a binding of a string and not binding of a string optional. So we can't really do that. So if I say over here, enter name and for the text, if I'm simply going to try to bind it to my new property that I created, which is a name property, it's not going to work and the reason it's not going to work is that it is actually marked as optional right here. So what can we do and how can we fix it? Now, you might say that, hold on a second, why can't you just do it like this and be done with it? Well, yes, it will work, but sometimes you do want optional properties because that is how you are saving it in the database. Now, if you don't do that, then you will have to somehow convert. Either you have to store empty string in the database, which is not a good idea, or you have to convert the empty string back to the nullable or null value and then store in the database. So in any case, it's just not allowing you to put a binding of a string nullable or string optional. So how can we do this? How can we make sure that we can put a binding of string optional. Now there are multiple ways of doing that. The first way is we can extend the optional. And this part is actually taken from the Stack Overflow. So I'm just gonna post a link to Stack Overflow where the credit is due. And I'm gonna go ahead and extend. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an optional where the wrapped value, we're gonna check if the wrapped value is actually string. So this will only work if we are talking about a string optional because we are saying that the wrap value will be string. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and create a private property bound or any property, whatever you want the name to be. And then we can simply go ahead and return it. So return this particular property, return self, which is the value of this property. And we can also go ahead and set the property, which is bound to be self equals to new value. So self equals to new value. All right, so this is a private property. We can't really use it outside. So if you do want to use it outside, you do have to expose it as a public property. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a bound property. And inside the bound property, I can go ahead and say that go ahead and return me the bound property or go ahead and return me the empty string. So this null call sec operator is going to return the non-nullable thing and also it will unwrap it. And the second part that we need to do is the setter part. In this, we are going to set our private property. And if our new value that we are setting is empty, then we are going to set it to be nil, else we will set it to the new value, all right? So this is one way of doing this. And what it will allow us to do is that we can go back to our name property on 38 and we can simply say bound. And you can see that it's just going to extract out the bindable string, which means the string binding of the string instead of binding of string optional and give us the unwrapped value. I can go ahead and run this now and you can see it compiles properly. Great, right? Now this is all fine. There is another way that you can write the same thing, but in this way, you are going to be creating 
uh, operator are overriding the null call second operator. So how can we do that? So in that case, we're going to go ahead and create an extension on the binding itself. And by creating an extension on binding, we are going to make sure that, that we are overwriting a function for this. So this is a null call second operator. We are kind of like overwriting this particular function. And the left hand side will be a binding of optional. And the optional part is going to take in a value. Now this particular value is the value that is passed to the parameter to the initializer of the binding because binding is a generic uh, class or a generic, let's see if, I, if it's a class or not. So it's a generic uh, item that you can see it's a struct. So it's a generic struct and the value is over here, right here. All right, so that's the value that we're providing over here. And so this is the first half, the left-hand side, the right-hand side in this case will be just a value. So it can be string, it can be anything else. And the thing that we're going to be returning it will be binding of value. So binding of string, binding of int, or whatever. Now we can go ahead and actually return it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say return binding. And you can see that we can provide a getter and setter. So in the getter, that's the first one, we can go ahead and say the left hand side dot wrapped value or give us the right hand side. So it's going to return us the null nullable item whether the left hand side or the right hand side. And we are, when we are setting it, we are just going to set the left hand side wrap value to be whatever you're passing, which is the new value that you're setting up. Now I can go ahead and build this. And if I want to use this particular behavior, I don't have to use the bound anymore. I can simply say, use this or use default value. Or, you know, default value can be anything, obviously. We're simply putting it as a string but this can be anything. And now you can see right over here, it's actually set to a default value. But if I go ahead and set it to whatever, John Doe or something, and if I run this, then you'll be able to see that now it's set up to John Doe. So this is how you will bind the values in a, uh, in a text field, which takes in a binding of string and not binding of optional string but we were able to provide a different implementation of the null call second operator by kind of overriding it and providing a different implementation by providing a left-hand side, which in this case is a binding optional value, and the right-hand side, which is simply the value itself. So this is the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. All right, hopefully in uh, Swift UI 2.0, uh, they will take care of these issues because it is pretty common that you have optional of string or optional of int and something and you just want to put it and pass it to the text field. So you don't really have to do all of those different things. Uh, so hopefully they will take care of these problems in the future. But Swift UI is still very new and these things, basic features are not really available at the moment. So that's why we have to use either extension of the binding or we have to use the optional extension where we are simply provided the underlying wrapped value. All right, so hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed the video and want to support my channel, then definitely check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses on Udemy, including the Swift UI course, the new course, which is about testing iOS apps, MVVM design pattern, Mastering RX Swift, Combine, Artificial Intelligence, Flutter, Augmented Reality, JSON Parts and Blockchain, and much, much more. Now, the best way to get these courses would be to take a look at the YouTube description of this video and you will find the links to the courses. Please do use those links in the YouTube description of this video because if you use those links, I will get to keep a little bit of more higher revenue and you get the best deal possible. Uh, thank you again so much, and please subscribe to my channel, and if you like the video, and you can do a thumbs up or like the video on giving a, giving a star or giving a thumbs up, that will be really appreciated because other people are going to find this video, and hopefully they will find it also helpful. Thank you so much for your continuous support, 
And if you have any questions, let me know.